So I've been out here at my spot in the wilderness area for a couple of hours now, and I've been practicing with my tarp, doing a number of variations on setups in preparation for my overnight camp out, out here. And time kind of got away from me, so it's about mid-afternoon now, and I think it's time I made some lunch. So I brought out something very special to share with you today. I hope you enjoy it. I brought out two East Coast classics that I'm going to combine into one meal. First, it'll be bacon-wrapped scallops, followed by fiddleheads. If you're interested in seeing what that looks, and tastes like keep watching so before I start preparing the food for my lunch which I'll show you of course I have to get my fire started now once again we're under a partial fire ban a daytime fire ban here in Nova Scotia so I'm not allowed to use wood but again I can use charcoal and I have a new stove that I'm testing out I wanted to show you anyway this is no kind of a preview or review but this is the flat pack stove from siege stoves and this one is in titanium this was loaned to me by a friend of mine it wasn't sent to me by the company but I am liking it. Spoiler alert, I am liking it and I'm likely going to purchase one for myself. So to get this fire started, let's get the fire lighter going. And I have a combination of charcoal, some lump charcoal that I'll be putting in first because it lights up the fastest and gets the, the most heat going. And then I'll add in a little bit of briquettes just for an even longer burning heat. Look at the size of that piece. Will that go in? Oh yeah, it'll go in. That's fine. It'll take a little bit of time for that to engage, and that's the reason why I wanted to start out. I'll throw a few more briquettes in now. I wanted to start with this because the first thing I have to do is to prepare my fiddleheads, give them a, a very, very thorough washing or rinsing, and then put them on for a boil for about 10 minutes, and then they'll be ready to cook up in the fry pan after that. So why don't I show you the fiddleheads? So these are the fiddle heads I'll be having for my lunch today. I thought I'd just bring one up and give you a little look at it. Now, uh, full disclosure, I had planned on going to an area where I know fiddle heads grow because they don't grow just in my immediate area, anywhere at least that I've been able to find here in the wilderness area. But I do know where some grow and I, I had full intentions of going out and harvesting them for myself for this video. But... Uh, we are still under quite a lockdown. In fact, we're under travel restrictions. We can't go outside of our own community right now because we're in the midst of our third wave of the pandemic. So uh, the farthest that I could go to forage these was the grocery store. So that's what I did. Went to the grocery store, picked up a, uh, well, this much. You can see how much I've got here. Enough for one meal anyway. And uh, But because the reason I wanted to show you uh, foraging them is so I could help you identify them if you wanted to go out and forage your own. They uh, fiddleheads. Are, is just a, a generic term for a lot of the ferns as they come up out of the ground. Maybe I can show you that. As the fern comes up out of the ground, it's all curled up. And in the, the ostrich fern from which these are, are from, they have like a papery covering on it. And of course, as it grows, it unfolds and expands out into that fern. So the fiddleheads that you eat are from the ostrich fern. There are similar looking ones from the cinnamon fern, but they are not edible. Now, they're not deadly poisonous, but they're not edible if you consume them on a regular basis. Um, my understanding is research is showing that they can cause cancer over time. Even so, fiddleheads, real fiddleheads from the ostrich fern still need to be cooked properly in order to avoid any problems. So the one thing I can show you, I think, that differentiates this from the fiddlehead, especially of the cinnamon fern, it's about the only one about the same size, is you can see that divot in the inside of a fern. So this has a C-shape. If you were to look at it on end, I don't know if I can show that, if you were able to look at that on end, you could see it has a C shape. If it doesn't have a C shape, it's not an ostrich fern, it's not an edible fiddlehead. Okay, so that's so much for the lesson. Now, all I'm doing is these are all, they have the, some of the paper wrapping on them, still a little bit of earth on them. I'm just simply going to take my time to cut the ends off, and I have my pot here that I will be putting them in as I go. I'm not going to sit here and do the whole thing while you're watching, of course, but... And once I get them all cut like this, I'll go down to the water's edge and get some water that I can uh, rinse them off. Uh, probably a couple changes of water just to be safe. And then get them on to boil. So I'll work on these until they're done. It won't take me very long. And uh, we'll go on to the next step. All right, they've been uh, boiling 
They're simmering pretty good for at least 10 minutes now. They still look nice and green, not all washed out. That's usually the worry people have about cooking them or simmering them for that long is they're going to lose all the flavor. Uh, I don't find that to be the case as long as you don't overdo it. Now I'm going to take those off and I'm going to drain them in a second but I'm going to prepare my fry pan now for the simmering or simmering what if uh, frying. Frying not simmering at all is it? Okay so I'm going to put a little bit of olive oil in the pan and some ghee. Ghee is clarified butter. It does not require refrigeration, but in this warm afternoon it has gone to liquid. Now oh, that's nice. Put the two of those in and as soon as I drain my my uh, fiddleheads off and this oil gets a little hotter, I'll put them in the fry pan. All right, the oil in my fry pan is nice and hot. It's actually shimmering, which is where you want it, just before the smoke point. Now I've done my... There we go. It'll take a few minutes for those to cook up in the oil. But, time to add the magic, the spices. Now traditionally it's well, at least around here. I mean, you can add anything you want wherever you're at. Garlic, salt, and pepper. And I just went through my spice kit. I had garlic, of course. I had salt. But I didn't have any pepper, so I think I'll just forego the pepper. I do have some Cajun spices. I may just add that on in a few minutes' time. Not too hot. Good. So, I'm going to cook them. I mean... For all intents and purposes, they're cooked now, but this just adds a nice flavor to them to drive off any moisture, crisp them up a little bit, and make them ready for the plate. But before I'm ready to eat them, I have to add my next meal to the fry pan, which of course is the bacon wrapped scallops. Oh, all right. Yeah, they're ready. I'm a little worried they're going to stick to the pan. They haven't stuck to the pan yet, but that's. I don't want them to be in there that long. So they are now ready. What I'll do is I'll take them off. I'm going to put them back in the pot just to keep them warm because it's going to take a few minutes for the scallops to cook. So let me reset up with the fry pan ready to go for the scallops. Okay, right, fry pan is ready again. You can see I didn't bother cleaning out uh, what was left from the fiddleheads. Just that's only added flavor. So all it is is just the spices. All right, I have six. Beautiful. Sea scallops wrapped in bacon. Toothpick going through just to uh, keep it all together. Alright, just enough, just the right size. So I'll just keep flipping those every, uh, every minute or so, or whatever it takes. But I think, keep them flipping until I think they're ready. And what I'm looking for, of course, the bacon needs to cook up, but I'm also looking to make sure that the scallops have gone white, lost that translucent look they have right now. But they also get a, a dose of garlic and salt. So I'll do that. Garlic. Yes, I like my garlic. And fish always needs a little bit of salt on it. Good. So I'll work on these until they're ready. I may throw the uh, fiddleheads back in the pan just to give them a reheat. Maybe not. We'll see how well heated they stay in the pot. And uh, then we'll be ready. So one final look at the scallops in the fry pan, nice and crisping up. You can see a nice little bit of crispy caramelization taking place on the bacon and the tops of the scallops. They are ready. You don't want to overdo scallops. You don't want them to get hard and rubber. You just want them to be 
uh, gone past, translucent into white, and just a little further, and uh, the bacon just a little crispy, and then we're ready. And these are ready, so I'm going to take them off, I'm going to reheat my fiddleheads, put them on the plate, and I'll bring you back. Okay, these are ready. Let me tilt the camera down, I'll show you what we've got. Fiddleheads, bacon wrapped scallops. The expression we use in Nova Scotia, much of the East Coast, that these are going to be some good, right some good. So let's check them out. See, this, this is like a, a rite of uh, every spring for Nova Scotians and East Coasters, not just Nova Scotians, of course, to enjoy the feed of fiddleheads. Mm. They, um, they only come out for a short period of time. Of course, then they're grown, going to grow into the full fern. So you have to watch for them as they just start to emerge. If you're going to forage them on your own, you have to kind of know where to get, we have to know where to get them. You have to know when to get them roughly, and then you need to start going out and watching for them. And over a period of a couple of weeks, new ones will emerge. Now there's responsible harvesting as well. They grow in clumps or hillocks kind of a thing, little clumps of them, and you only take about 15%, maybe less, 5% off of each hillock because they are a slow grower. If you take them all, you won't have any next year. You may not have any thereafter. So you do have to be re very responsible in your harvesting of them. The scallops we can get pretty much all year round, but uh, it's just something nice about eating the two of these together. So let's have one of these scallops. Got to pull the toothpick out. Mm. Wrapped in bacon, cooked in butter, garlic and salt. This is like a trip back to my childhood at, at the cottage. My parents would uh, splurge and do this once each. Well, this is still mid-spring or late spring, I guess. But uh, we would have these just once a year. Well, because you can't have fiddleheads all year round. But the uh, bacon wrapped scallops, they were a special occasion, without a doubt. A little, little rich, a little expensive, but the combination of the two qualifies as a ketogenic meal for anybody who's interested, which is one of the reasons I'm enjoying it. Mmm. Wind picking up here. Okay. Before they get cold, I'll finish them off. But I'd be like to know if you've ever had bacon-wrapped scallops and fiddleheads, not necessarily at the same time, if you've had either. What's your thoughts on them, if you like uh, or enjoy them. If you do them a different way. Now, my wife at home, when we do the bacon-wrapped scallops, they're done in the oven just for convenience sake. They don't have to be done in a fry pan. They can be grilled on a barbecue as well. You just have to watch that they don't overcook or burn. Uh, doing them in the fry pan just allowed me to keep the oil and the butter from, or ghee, from the, the fiddleheads. So I was able to add flavors together. Just a convenient way of cooking them. But I'm interested if you have them, what other combinations of foods you might have with either of these foods. And uh, yeah, ask any questions you'd like. If you have any suggestions for future meals that I might bring out here to the woods, please put those in the comments section. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.